Welcome campers. Welcome to day one of your clay camp. I'm Mrs. Taylor with Studio Ace. And for day one, we're gonna be creating a really fun project with air dry clay. It's going to be a functional sculpture of a little cupcake that actually the lid will come off. So it'll be a little container. And I'm gonna show you how to do two different styles of lids so you can choose which one that you want to try out. So let's go ahead and make sure you have all the supplies you need and then we'll get started. Welcome campers to day one of your clay camp with Mrs. Taylor. Today we're going to be making a really fun sculpture out of air dry clay. It's going to be a what we call a functional sculpture of a cupcake. It's going to have a lid and a bottom and the lid you'll be able to remove so you can use it as a pinch pot as well. I'm going to actually show you how to do two different types of lid to, to give you a little bit more of a challenge depending on your skill level. So let's just look at what's in your kit to make sure you have all of your supplies before we get going. You should have five different kinds of paint in your kit. And this paint is gonna be used for every day of camp. So we have our three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. And these are the colors that we are gonna to use to mix any color of the rainbow. Green, purple, orange, turquoise, anything your heart desires. And then of course we have black and white. Black is gonna make your colors darker and deeper, what we call shades, and white is going to make your colors lighter, um, what we call tints. And then also in your kit, you should have a paintbrush, which we're going to use during the sculpture process and also when we get to painting. If you have your own paintbrushes, by all means, please bring them in because different sizes can be really helpful. You should have a little modeling stick or larger skewer stick, and also a tongue depressor, or what we call a big popsicle stick. And then of course the most important, which is your air dry clay. The couple of things that I would recommend getting in addition to your kit would be a small bowl or small cup of water that you can dip your fingers in as you're working to smooth out the clay and get rid of any cracks. And then also a small fork and a butter knife. And also maybe like a napkin or even a, uh, like an old towel or something that you can clean your fingers off if you need to. Any kind of fork or knife will do. You can use a plastic one, it doesn't really matter. The knife is just for you if you need help with cutting your clay. And the fork is to create texture in your clay or design and also to help with adding piece to piece to stick. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start off with our pinch pot, which would be the bottom of our cupcake or what you would call like the muffin tin, the cupcake tin, right? And so we wanna break off some of our clay and I usually just kind of um, twist and kind of pull off a piece like so. Get some of these things out of the way. Um, but if that's hard for you, that's what the butter knife is really handy for because then you can just cut some clay off too. And when you'll also need something to build your sculpture on um, as it gets going, so you don't have to carry it around like a paper plate or a piece of cardboard. I have like an old piece of cardboard here that I'm gonna put it on when I'm done. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take the piece that I pulled off and I'm just gonna build a ball and it's going to be somewhere between a golf ball and a baseball size. And it doesn't really matter if you decide that you wanna make multiple cupcakes, you could make them much, much smaller, so more like a golf ball size or even smaller than that. Um, I'm just showing you how to do um, one where it will use most of your clay. So that is about this size, a little bit between a golf ball and a baseball, a little bit smaller than a baseball. So once you have a nice ball formed, you're gonna go ahead and stick your thumb through the middle and you wanna have the clay on the palm of your hand, not on the, on the table or the counter because you, um, you don't want it to be flat at this time and you also wanna be able to feel it because you don't want your thumb to go all the way through. You're gonna push your thumb through until you start to feel it on the other side, the pressure from your thumb, but you don't wanna go all the way through. So I probably have about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch left. So you can see here. And then once you have about that big of an opening, we're gonna do what we call the pinch method. And some of you are, may already be familiar with, and you really just wanna use your thumb on the inside the entire time. You don't wanna put all of your fingers in, you really wanna keep your fingers on the outside. You probably have small hands, so you might end up using all of your fingers. You might just use your pointer finger, or you might just use two fingers. Everybody's a little bit different. But the key is to pinch very slowly. That way you don't get a lot of cracks, right? And you don't wanna split the clay. So you stick your thumb inside and you pinch slightly 
and then slightly more and you slowly turn while you're pinching. So this is one turn and you can see how much my opening enlarged, but not too quickly, okay? So we're just gonna do that very, very patiently. And you wanna make sure you get your thumb all the way down to the inside and then all the way up to the top towards what they call the lip of the pot. So that way you get a nice even thickness. You don't wanna have it really thin at the base and really thick at the top or the opposite of that. So nice and slowly, working at the bottom, in the middle, and at the top as you get around. I'm not going too fast because I don't want my clay to dry and crack. So this is what we call air dry clay, right? It's going to dry in the air. So the more time we spend on it, the more time it's out in the air and it's gonna start to dry out and you might start getting some cracks here and there. If you're finding that it's happening sooner than later, then just dip one finger and that's all, just one finger. You don't want too much water. And then you can kind of just add just a tiny bit to kind of help with the drying and the cracking. The reason I say just one finger is because you don't want it to get all muddy and mushy and your hand covered in clay because that's too much water. And that's why I keep the napkin or the towel nearby so now I can kind of dry off my finger and I'm not gonna have a soupy, muddy pot. So now I'm gonna go back to pinching nice and slow and as you can see on the first pot that i made my walls here these are called walls the top is called the lip are pretty thin right if you look in in comparison to like the size of my pinky yours might end up being a bit thicker like this this is pretty standard especially with the younger ages so don't feel like yours have to be as thin as mine if you've done this before and you have more experience you're a little bit older and have a little bit more patience, you can try to get it a little bit thinner. And what happens when you get the walls a little bit thinner, it just means that your pot, your cupcake's going to be larger. Now, if you start to notice that the top of the walls are getting kind of wobbly, right? One's taller than the other. You can kind of flip your pot upside down and just give it a little tap on the table. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. You gotta do it quickly so it doesn't stick and that'll help kind of flatten off the lip there. All right, so we're getting a pretty good thickness now. Remember, not too fast, not too fast. I'm going a little faster than you probably will just for the sake of time on this video. Now I'm gonna stick two thumbs in now that I have a nice big opening just to kind of make sure and feel around that things are even. It's not too thick at the bottom it's not too thick at the top. It's pretty even, but I do have a very round bottom. So now I want to start it, start to get it to look like the bottom of a cupcake. So I can kind of just kind of tap it on the table to flatten it out. If you feel like it's sticking, then get your paper plate or your piece of cardboard. It is a little sticky at this stage, depending on what kind of surface you're working on. All right, now I have a flat bottom, here we go. And now I have my pinch pot. So this is step one. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this off to the side. So I just wanna show you two different thicknesses that are gonna be perfectly fine. And I might give this a little tap upside down again, just to make sure it's nice and flat. And the reason why you want the lip to be pretty flat is because when you put your lid on, you want it to not wobble off, right? You want it to fall off. You want it to lay flat and flush. So I have two different thicknesses of walls. So you can kind of see that both of these are just fine. If you're finding that yours is a little wobbly, right? Like maybe it's not as round as you would like. The wonderful thing about clay is you can start over as many times as you want. So if you're not super happy with your first try, just take your clay and smoosh it back into a ball form that sphere again. And if you're finding that it's drying out because you were just handling it, it's been on the air, just dip your hand in the water, add a little bit of water and kind of smush and work the water in. And then of course you might want to like dry off your hands because they're going to be a little bit muddy before you start over. Okay, so step two is going to be the lid. So here are two options for lids. I wanted to give you options because we have a, a, a wide uh, array of ages that are participating in this camp. 
So if you're on the younger side, you might wanna do a lid like this. This is just a second pinch pot that's very round at the top, like you would have rounded frosting and then a cherry on the top. You could also do a strawberry if you wanted or a chocolate chip. And then if you have a little bit more skill level, like you've worked with clay before, you know how to make a coil with clay, or you're a little bit older and you'd like a little bit more of a challenge, or maybe you just want to challenge all the way, then you could do more of a swirly frosting lid. Both of these are super fun. So we have that lid and that. Oh, look, that one even fits on that one. That's pretty cool. So let's do the coil first. I'm gonna take a little bit of my clay maybe about the size of a golf ball, maybe smaller. Make sure your space is clear. And you're gonna first start squishing it in your hand. And it might start looking kind of like the shape of a hot dog. And then once you have it about this thickness, then you can put it onto the table. And to how to make a coil, you wanna make sure that you roll it all the way through back and fourth. One mistake that I see students make when they're just learning how to make coils is they'll go one, two, and that's not the entire roll of the clay, so then it'll end up flattening your clay off. So if I go just back and forth, and you'll be able to show you here, see how it's like starting to flatten right there? You see that's wider here than it is here? Then you're gonna get a really wide kind of square flat coil. We want it to be round. So in order to get it round, you need to go all the way through the roll, right? Think about when you're rolling down a grass hill. You want it to be an even roll. <laughs> if you do find that you're starting to get a flattened coil, you can roll it up onto its high side and kind of put a little pressure on that spot and then it'll be back to the thickness of the rest of the coil. So I'm gonna use one hand to start. I'm using this part of my fingers. And then as your coil gets a little bit longer, then you can start using two hands. Roll all the way through. And if you find that one side is getting skinnier than the other side, then don't put any pressure on that side for a little while. Work on this side till it evens out. We want it to be pretty even. And don't be discouraged if, it's, if you're having a hard time this first pass through. I've been making coils for a lot of years. Right? If this is your first time, it might take a couple tries. So if it gets really flat, if it gets really skinny on one side, it cracks and breaks off, don't worry too much about it. Just put it right back into a ball, smoosh it together, and then start all over. I even have to start over sometimes, and I've been doing this for a long time. So if it starts getting too long for your space, make sure you clear things out of the way. That will happen. You want it to be pretty long, but if it does break off, and the coil that broke off is still in decent shape, just put it off to the side, because we can reattach it. It's really easy. So clay and water work like glue. So the water can attach anything that you want to attach. So you can go really skinny for the frosting. You can go pretty wide. It's really up to you. So <clears throat> I'm ready to start. I'm gonna take one end and I'm gonna kind of point it on the end or what we call taper and that's going to be the top here okay so i'm going to take the top and i'm going to start wrapping around that little point i'm going to put it here on the counter so it's easier to see i'm going to put it on my cardboard so it doesn't stick okay so i'm just wrapping it slowly around all right i'm getting a nice big shape okay now when i get to the end same thing i'm going to taper it off i'm going to take a little bit of water to the end and then i'm going to use that water as glue and i'm going to kind of push it into that end spot you could use your tongue depressor to kind of flatten it off to make sure it's not going anywhere. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of water, just one finger of water, and I'm gonna kind of push it around on the top here. And what's that going to do? What is that going to do is the water's gonna go into the little cracks and it's gonna kind of help the coils stick together. 
not too much, just a finger or two dipped in water. And I'm gonna carefully pick it up and I'm gonna kind of push some pressure on the edges, on the sides, to kind of help the coils stick together. And then I'm gonna grab my pot, because I want it to match. I think it looks about right. And then I'm gonna kind of flip it over and with my thumbs, I'm gonna kind of shape it more rounded. Oh, and see it came apart right there? That's when we need a little bit more water. One more smushing, I didn't smush enough. And you just wanna round it until you get more of a shape like this. So it's almost like a little bit of a pot on the, on the other side. And also make sure it's going to be fitting, oh, look, perfect, on top of your cupcake. And there you go. And then just make sure you don't have any big cracks. This is where your paintbrush is gonna come in handy. Put a little bit of water on it and kind of push it into any cracks that you see or even push it in between the coils. And then that will ensure that's gonna stick. Now, I'm not gonna let it dry on top of my pot because I'm worried that they'll stick together. So I'm gonna take it off and put it off to the side. And at this stage, you could make any kind of decorations that you want, right? If you wanna do sprinkles or a cherry top or a strawberry, some chocolate chips or something. If you wanted to make some sprinkles, you could just make a tiny itty bitty coil. Skinny, skinny coil. And then take your butter knife and just cut them into little pieces. Kind of roll them. They're like really big sprinkles. Put a little bit of water on it and then stick it to the top, like that. So if you can see it here, a bit better. And then decorate it however you would like. So now I'm gonna show you how to do the second lid, which is this lid, which is a little bit more simpler, just a second pinch pot. All right, if you wanna do a lid more like this, you're gonna start the same way we did for the bottom part of the cupcake. And you just start with a small ball, maybe a little bit smaller than you started with for the top. I mean, for the bottom, roll it into a ball. Put your thumb in it on the palm of your hand. And this one you can keep nice and round because it's going on the top. You don't have to flatten it off or anything. Okay, and then my thumb is stuck. <laughs> Start pinching it slowly. And the hardest part with this one is just matching the size. So you have to pinch until you get it as big as your bottom pot. And if you find that it gets too thin and it's still not wide enough, then you might have to start over and add a little bit more clay because maybe you just didn't start with enough clay. So I'm gonna use two hands now that the hole is getting a bit wider. I'm gonna do my flattening like so. Remember, if you get any big cracks, so this is kind of what I was talking about here, like something like that might start to get a lot bigger. Just take a little tiny drop of water on your finger and kind of smooth it out. You can also use your tongue depressor so the cracks don't get bigger. Okay, let's see how I'm doing on size. Nope, oh, still too small. If you hear any strange noises in the background, like a, like a tapping on the floor, <laughs> my dog is running around. And I also have a guinea pig in the room who occasionally will squeak. So if you're like, what's going on over there? Is she living in a zoo? 
little bit. <laughs> okay, still quite not big enough. So just keep going until that pinch pot is wide enough to fit on top of the bottom pot. Takes a little bit of time. So I've got a little bit of ways to go. So you just keep working at it until it fits all the way around. And it's the same size like that, okay? And then same thing, you can add whatever you want onto it. So say you wanna add on a cherry like I did on this one. To get it to stick, whatever it is that you're sticking, whether it's a sprinkle, a cherry, a chocolate chip. The sprinkles are really easy because they're so tiny, you can just use water. But with some bigger items, you wanna make sure you do a little bit of scoring. It's kind of like scratching into the clay. So if I wanted to put the cherry right there, I would take my fork and I would scratch the top of my fork in two different directions. Then I would add a touch of water, which is my glue. I would scratch or score the bottom of my cherry. It doesn't have to be anything too extreme. And then just kind of put that on the top and then it'll make sure that it sticks a lot better. You don't want it falling off when it dries. And then so you don't see all that rough scoring, just take your paintbrush and kind of smooth it out. The paint, paintbrush is great for any kind of smoothing, any cracks. Adding a little bit of texture even. So is the tongue depressor. The tongue depressor just comes in really handy for smoothing anything that you don't want there, like usually cracks. Okay, now last but not least, we're gonna go back to our first pot, which is our muffin tin. And if you've ever noticed on like cupcakes and muffin tins that they have these little lines, see that? And this is really easy to do. That's what this tool is gonna to come in handy for. So you just have to be careful because the clay's still pretty mushy at this stage but you're just gonna take your skewer on the pointy side and you're just gonna create a line. Just kind of push into the clay and then you're just gonna move around the pot until you have a line, you see that? All the way around. Okay? And then that creates the texture of that. So now would be the time that you add any little personal touches, whatever it is that you wanna to do to make your cupcake more about you. And then don't forget at the very end, always put your name on the bottom. You can write it with your skewer. You could always write it with paint later. I like to carve stuff in because then it's never going anywhere. Taylor. Can you see that? All right. So now I'm gonna put these off to dry. Air dry clay does take a bit of time to dry. So try not to touch them for at least two days. If it's really warm in your house, if we have a hot day, it might only take one day. So I would say after one day, come back and check on it. See if it's drying. You might wanna flip over your pinch pot. This will help the bottom dry. And you can also kind of put your lid on its side like that, if it's already hardened a little bit, and that'll kind of help the air get into the inside. And then once it's completely dry, after at least two days, because you really want to make sure it's dry, then you get to paint it. And that's when you all your beautiful paint colors come in. And we're going to go over more of how to mix paint in um, day two of camp, um, because we're going to do a lot more color mixing in that project. And your clay has to dry anyway, so we'll learn that tomorrow, and then you can come back to your cupcake. So I hope you like this project and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for making art with me.